The story of Star Wars is generally a tale of good versus evil, filled with characters that solidify their stance in the matter through the actions they take on their respective journeys. It's through these actions that these characters transform from just everyday people into legends. This begs the question, which character is the best? Many may give one or various answers, I believe there are quite a few. So my goal in this series is to intensely analyze the characters I believe fit this mold and to make a case for them as the greatest Star Wars character of all time. The character I want to look at today is Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn. Although Qui-Gon only appears in one film, his impact on the saga's events and characters is substantial. In this video, I want to go over how his ideals and actions influence the entire narrative of Star Wars as a whole. At the start of The Phantom Menace, we're introduced to Qui-Gon as the wise mentor of his young Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi. The difference between their approach to the Force is immediately established as Obi-Wan is concerned with the future and things that he cannot control or fully understand, where Qui-Gon always prioritizes the present, letting the Force guide his actions. Master Yoda said I should be mindful of the future. But not at the expense of the moment. Be mindful of the living Force, young Padawan. This then sets the foundation for establishing Qui-Gon as a character who does the best with the cards that are given to him, allowing him to adapt to any situation. When Viceroy Gunray closes the blast doors, Qui-Gon puts all his focus in creating a weak point. When he finds out that the Trade Federation is sending an invasion army to Naboo, he comes up with the idea of stowing away on separate ships. And when he recognizes that Jar Jar's fear can be exploited, he does so in order to get himself one step closer to Thede, the capital city of Naboo. You hear that? Yeah? I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Oh, sorry. Wrong clip. You hear that? Yeah? That is the sound of a thousand terrible things heading this way. If they find us, they will crush us, grind us into tiny pieces, and blast us into oblivion. Either way, I think Jar Jar got the message. On the subject of Jar Jar, his role in Qui-Gon's story is to call attention to Qui-Gon's ability to see the good and potential in everyone, even in someone as clumsy and reckless as Jar Jar himself. Not to say he can't help himself from roasting him. Oh, Mui, Mui, I love you! You almost got us killed. Are you brainless? I speak! The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Now get out of here. But overall, he chooses to trust him in taking them to the Gungan City, as well as freeing him from punishment for returning to the place that banished him. He used the excuse of his life debt to have Jar Jar aid their navigation through the planet core. Jar Jar also highlights Qui-Gon's lack of fear, as we rarely see him become distressed by dangerous or unexpected situations. Whereas Jar Jar is always the first to voice his concern. The fearless nature Qui-Gon possesses comes from his deep-rooted trust in the Force. The Force will guide us. Jar Jar challenges this faith in the hopes that he will proceed with caution and avoid a negative outcome, but is proven wrong time and time again. There's always a bigger fish. The team's arrival on Tatooine showcases some of the negative qualities Qui-Gon has, particularly his stubborn and controlling nature. Whether it's to commoners like Jar Jar or royalty such as the Queen, his decision is final. Don't touch anything. You must trust my judgment, Your Highness. The Queen is not- The Queen trusts my judgment, young handmaiden. You should too. The queen doesn't need to know. While it may rub people the wrong way, mostly Padme, it's this very quality that allows him to block out the noise of doubt from others and permits him to concentrate on his goals with a clear sense of purpose. Even when his tactic of using a Jedi mind trick to barter for parts fails, he remains optimistic. All right, I'm sure another solution will present itself. His optimism is quickly rewarded in his encounter with the young boy Anakin Skywalker. Anakin provides the team with shelter during the sandstorm and a means to acquire the needed hyperdrive through his skills as a pod racer. But not only is Qui-Gon given an opportunity at getting off the planet, more importantly, he's presented with one of the most gifted force-sensitive beings he's ever encountered. Anakin's giveaway being his ability to see things before they happen, which mirrors Qui-Gon's affinity with always being in the present. And once again, Qui-Gon's capacity to see the untapped greatness in others is put on display as he places all his trust in Anakin to win the pod race. While Qui-Gon is reliant on the force, he shows that he has the savvy to capitalize on Watto's Achilles heel, gambling. Qui-Gon pulls a maneuver in persuasion more impressive than any Jedi mind trick. He convinces Watto to pay the fee to enter the race, provide the pilot and Anakin, and inadvertently submit his own pod racer, all on the promise of either some credits or a broken ship. 
Not to mention that Watto had enough evidence to believe that he was negotiating with the Jedi. What, you think you're some kind of Jedi waving your hand around like that? But wait, there's more. He falls for Qui-Gon's trickery a second time, as he bets either slave he owns for a pod racer he already owns, and then leaves it to chance. You can't have it. It wasn't a fair bet. Poor Watto. So Qui-Gon's belief in Anakin pays off as he wins the race and, without his knowledge, his own freedom. This grants him the ability to take his first steps in fulfilling his dreams of becoming a Jedi, although at the cost of being torn from the stable family and his mother. Qui-Gon understands this and makes every effort that he can to fill the void and be the father figure that was never present in Anakin's life. I'll watch out for him. You have my word. His words are immediately put to the test as he must protect Anakin from an ambush by the Sith apprentice Darth Maul. After his narrow escape, Qui-Gon takes on his role and assures a concerned Anakin that everything will be fine. What are we gonna do about it? We should be patient. Shortly upon his arrival to Coruscant, the audience is introduced to the Jedi Council for the first time. It's here that Qui-Gon's character traits and qualities are used as a tool to highlight the juxtaposing philosophies between himself and the Jedi Council, with Qui-Gon's ideals further emphasizing the flaws in the Jedi Code and its enforcers. Primarily his antithesis, Mace Windu. Mace is the ultimate representative of the Jedi Council of the Republic era, as he's the most conditioned to operate within the system of the Code, where Qui-Gon is shown to be faithful in the Force and the Chosen One. Finding him was the will of the Force. I have no doubt of that. Mace is the opposite, as he concerns himself with established rules. The Code forbids it. Qui-Gon's compassion is what allows him to see the glimpses of potential in Anakin where Mace is indifferent and quantifies his potential by arbitrary conditions. He's too old. Although, Qui-Gon and Mace Windu's one major similarity is their stubborn nature. No, he will not be trained. I will train him then. One in adhering to the will of the Force, and the other to following the Jedi Order. This in turn causes Qui-Gon to be open to the idea that the Sith have returned, whereas his detached counterpart along with the rest of the council, is doubtful. The Sith have been extinct for a millennia. I do not believe the Sith could have returned without us knowing. It's because of this detachment that Qui-Gon actively chooses not to join the council, and instead focuses his attention on teaching his Padawan the true ways of the Jedi. It's in Qui-Gon's wisdom that he lays a foundation for his apprentice to learn and grow. Obi-Wan, being a byproduct of the Jedi Order, makes mistakes similar to the Council and placing too much value in the Code. If you would just follow the Code, you would be on the Council. Qui-Gon, though, shows him early on that the Living Force should be his only priority and responsibility as a Jedi, which is what he means when he says, I shall do what I must, Obi-Wan. A lesson that years later, Obi-Wan would painfully understand. I will do what I must. When Obi-Wan challenges Qui-Gon on the danger of Anakin, Qui-Gon reminds him, His fate is uncertain. He is not dangerous. A lesson that teaches Obi-Wan not to fear the unknown, one that he would come to appreciate as he embarks on the next stage of his life from Padawan to Jedi Knight. Qui-Gon's role in the film as a mentor, though, doesn't stop with Obi-Wan. It carries over to Anakin as well. He understands that for Anakin, unlike Obi-Wan, he hasn't been conditioned by the Jedi Order, so he advises him oh, I want you to watch me and be mindful. because he recognizes that if he leads by example, Anakin will be in the safest route to follow in his footsteps and not the Council's. This is important because Qui-Gon has seen firsthand the good nature of Anakin. Mom, you say the biggest problem in this universe is nobody helps each other. It's from this that he gains Qui-Gon's trust to make the right decisions. Feel. Don't think. Use your instincts. If Anakin were instead obligated to suppress these feelings of compassion as the Council instructs, he would be forced onto a darker path. To help avoid this path, he suggests, When you learn to quiet your mind, you'll hear them speaking to you. Paralleling Yoda's teachings to Luke. But how am I to know the good side from the bad? You will know when you are calm, at peace. With one of the most important words of wisdom, he gives Anakin being. Your focus determines your reality. This lets Anakin know that fear and doubt can be beaten if he focuses on the positive, and actively chooses to continue being hopeful and resilient. This is crucial for Anakin as his character's journey is spearheaded by the immense fear in his heart, as alluded to earlier in the film. I sense much fear in you. 
The Republic's success on the Battle of Naboo, in all its aspects, from the battle in the Great Grass Plains, to the fight in space, and the assault on Theed, is all only possible because of one character, Qui-Gon. It's Qui-Gon's actions throughout the story that have direct consequences on the plot of the film. When others believed him to be useless, Qui-Gon kept Jar Jar around. It was through Jar Jar that the team was able to acquire a connection to the Gungan Grand Army, which played a pivotal role in drawing the droid army away from the city and creating a diversion for Qui-Gon and the others to enter the palace. A similar sentiment can be said with Anakin, where Qui-Gon went out of his way to free him and have the nine-year-old join the team, a move that was also questionable by others. Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Man, Obi-Wan's a savage. A anyways. It's Anakin's skill as a pilot in connection with the Force that allow him to aid the fighter squadron and destroy the control ship to shut down all the droids on the Trade Federation army, all made possible by Qui-Gon's instructions. Stay in that cockpit. As for the assault on Theed itself, it's Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan's training with the Jedi arts that allow them to confront the most dangerous obstacle in Darth Maul when he presents himself, giving Padme the opening to go after the Viceroy. The infamous Duel of the Fates is perhaps one of the most significant lightsaber duels in Star Wars. The fight is filled with spectacle and excitement, but what truly makes it outstanding is the tension that's built and the consequences the duel has on the story. Said best by director and producer Dave Filoni. He's fighting for Anakin, and that's why it's the duel of the fates, the fate of this child. And depending on how the fight goes, Anakin's life will be dramatically different. Wygon's selfless prioritization on other people's lives is contrasted in Darth Maul, a man who was sent by Palpatine to like the map. All of them. Qui-Gon and Maul are reflections of what Anakin could become. The wise sage accompanied by the family he chooses, or the lonesome warrior, only seeking to crave power. And so Qui-Gon fights, as the Force directs his path, illustrated perfectly when the duel hits a standstill, and Qui-Gon and Maul are separated by laser barriers. Qui-Gon patiently continues to trust in the Force and guide him, both spiritually and in the fight, where Maul is impatient and solely uses the Force as a tool to feed his rage and kill. Soon after, Qui-Gon fails and is defeated by Maul, leaving the apprentices of good and evil to face off, fighting for their masters, the only two men who Anakin would ever consider to be a father figure. While Obi-Wan is bested, it's in the moment that Maul displays his weakness, that of hubris, that Obi-Wan follows on Qui-Gon's wise words and lets his focus become his reality. Poetically defeating the Sith Apprentice with his master's weapon, symbolic of the completion in his training, as he was once the learner, now he is the master. Unfortunately for Qui-Gon, the damage has been done and he requests to Obi-Wan. Promise me you will train the boy. Yes, master. Setting into motion the inevitable path of Anakin's destiny. As Filoni eloquently says, Qui-Gon knew what it meant to take this kid away from his mother when he had an attachment, and he's left with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan trains Anakin at first out of a promise that he makes to Qui-Gon, not because he cares about him, though he's a brother to Anakin eventually, but he's not a father figure. That's a failing for Anakin. He doesn't have the family he needs. This then being what allows Palpatine to fill this role. We will watch your career with great interest. Qui-Gon's cremation is a reflection of Vader's in Return of the Jedi, symbolizing that the story began as it ended, with the father sacrificing himself for the son. In episode 1, it's used as a foreboding sign of things to come. In episode 6, it delivers catharsis to the characters' arcs and journeys. In the following movies of the trilogy, as well as the Clone Wars TV series, Qui-Gon's afterlife is further explored. The first hint of his transcendence into the living force and death, a feat no other Jedi had ever accomplished to that point, is shown in Attack of the Clones. As Anakin embraces one of his darkest moments, Yoda can hear the voice of Qui-Gon reaching out to him. Anakin! Qui-Gon, even in death, still cares for and believes in Anakin as displayed on the heavily Force-sensitive planet of Mortis. I believe you will bring balance to the Force, that you will face your demons and save the universe. Qui-Gon would continue to assume the role of a mentor and pass on what he had learned to the powerful Grand Master Yoda. Ready for my next instruction, Master Qui-Gon. Eventually reaching his former apprentice. How to commune with him, I will teach you. When Yoda encounters the Force Priestesses in the Wellspring of Life, they explain the path to immortality. In order for you to preserve your identity, you must know yourself, your true self. 
and then let go. Qui-Gon understood this philosophy and was rewarded for obtaining this knowledge with eternal life, the one ability that the Sith crave above all else, further exemplifying their fear of the death and their attempts to resist it, compared to Qui-Gon's acceptance of it. Most importantly, Qui-Gon's transcendence to the Living Force is a representation of one of his greatest strengths as a character, the ability to positively impact the characters around him, both in life through his actions and death through the memory of him. Qui-Gon reminds audiences the importance of having an optimistic person deep-seated in their ideals in their lives. Qui-Gon's story is about believing in something greater than yourself and standing your ground in those beliefs, understanding the impact we have on others, and the importance of the family we choose. As Filoni says, Star Wars is ultimately about family. In the end, his determination, wisdom, and selfless nature are what make Qui-Gon a beloved character. It's because of this and so much more, Qui-Gon has forever earned a special place in the hearts of audiences as the fatherly sage and the greatest Star Wars character of all time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I had a ton of fun making this video, so if you enjoyed it too, then I highly suggest liking the video. And if you want to see more like it, then definitely hit subscribe. Also, I just created a Patreon account, so if you enjoy the content and want to help support the channel, then check out the link in the description. Any contribution would help out immensely. Also, let me know in the comments which Star Wars character is the best father figure and why. And who knows, they might be in the next one. Until next time, remember, let your focus determine your reality.